With your latest news, I'm April Cummings. There are a total of 545 people who have been positive for SARS-CoV-2 in the Cayman Islands, of which 12 have been on Cayman Brac. At the moment, we have seven asymptomatic people who are positive, nobody who's symptomatic, and 536 have recovered. 118 people are in government-operated facilities for quarantine, and there are 546 in the very successful Quarantine at Home program. Chief Medical Officer Dr. John Lee at the first press briefing we've had on COVID-19 since the elections. The primary focus, getting as much of the population vaccinated as possible. He says in spite of a bit of a lull in April, they're seeing what he described as fairly good uptake of the vaccine in the past few days. We hope that continues until we've used up our supply, which should be enough to vaccinate an additional new 7,000 odd people. It's really important to pay attention to the fact that places like India, South America are suffering so badly with COVID-19 disease and to realize what a huge opportunity we have to get vaccinated and to protect ourselves and the community. As to today's COVID-19 test results, the chief medical officer reports 235 tests carried out since Tuesday. All are negative for SARS-CoV-2. At his first official press briefing, Premier the Honorable Wayne Panton stayed focused on the message, encouraging everyone who can to get the COVID-19 vaccine. The stock of the COVID-19 vaccine provided to the Cayman Islands by the United Kingdom earlier this year is set to expire at the end of June with some 14,000 doses still remaining. I don't think that the Cayman Islands can can waste a precious resource like this um, with our neighbors and others around the world desperate um, to have an increased supply. So we we are imploring all of our fellow residents to please make the necessary arrangements to attend the Owen Roberts Vaccination Center as soon as possible to get their first shots. Mr. Panson says plans to reopen the border depend heavily on the COVID-19 vaccination rate. But I want you to understand that we will remain on the conservative side. And any changes depend very much on our people who have not yet been vaccinated. Deciding to be a part of the solution by joining the rest of us who have. The last government had set the target vaccination rate at which borders would reopen at around 70 to 80 percent of the total population. We believe that while uh, 80 percent may be difficult to achieve, um, 70 percent is um, much more doable. If we have persons committed to acting in a manner that is reflective of the greater good. Because the current stock of the vaccine expires at the end of June, the first shot needs to be received by June 9th at the latest. Mr. Panton invited the public to join government officials on Saturday to get the vaccine at Owen Roberts International Airport at 10 a.m. While the U.K. does remain committed to continuing to supply the islands with all the vaccines that are needed, including adapted doses to tackle any new strains of COVID and perhaps booster vaccines if needed, His Excellency Governor Martin Roper says it is difficult to ask for more vaccine if we haven't used up the current supplies. And and I keep hearing that many people are are waiting until there's more information about the vaccines. Um, But again, as the Premier said, 1.1 billion people have had a vaccine dose across the world already. And the time for waiting is really over. Um, And the evidence is overwhelming that vaccines are are not only safe, they stop serious illness and death. There are about 14,000 doses of the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine left. It takes two doses for each person to be fully vaccinated. We can all see the desperate situation in other parts of the world caused by a lack of vaccine. And I, I think there would be significant outrage and even distress in some quarters if we weren't able to use the vaccines that we have been sent. Um, So I implore you to come forward if you have not yet done so. And the vaccine not only protects you, but it protects the wider 
community. Governor Roper says he strongly supports the new government remaining cautious on reopening of the border until we have a higher vaccination rate. In an effort to bring more people to the table, the government offered a COVID-19 vaccination incentive to encourage people to get the jab. The tourism ministry will be hosting an island-wide draw for everyone who gets vaccinated from the 8th of May to June the 8th. We'll be entered into for a draw for very, some, some amazing prizes, and there's still more to come, including tickets to, on Cayman Airways to Cayman Brack, to Miami, and to any destination um, that Cayman Airways flies. Tourism Minister the Honorable Kenneth Bryan says there are also a number of staycation and dinner packages, free entries to top attractions across the islands. And as it's an island-wide initiative, Minister Bryan is encouraging the business community to jump on board and be a part of sweetening the deal. And I would really like to you to encourage the businesses around you to help offer up prizes that are so amazing that the people will be rushing to be vaccinated just for a chance to win. If you're interested, email the ministry at mottvax at caymanislands.ky. In other local news, a research paper on sea turtles in the Cayman Islands by the Department of Environment and Exeter University shows that green and loggerhead turtle nest numbers have increased significantly over the past two decades. Radio Cayman's Paula Cal has more. Researchers found that green and loggerhead nest numbers have increased significantly across all three Cayman Islands since monitoring began in 1998. But the Hawksbill nest numbers remained low with a maximum of 13 nests recorded in a season. Comparing the first five years of nest numbers to the most recent five years, the greatest percentage increase in green turtle nests was in Grand Cayman from 82 to 1,005 nests a 1,126% increase, whereas the greatest percentage increase for loggerhead turtles' nests was in Little Cayman, from 10 to 290 nests at 3,800%. The Turtle Center's captive breeding operation contributed to the increase in the Grand Cayman green turtle population. However, loggerhead turtles were never captive bred, and these populations began to increase after a legal traditional turtle fishery became inactive in 2008. Although both species have shown significant signs of recovery, the study shows the populations remain at a, quote, fragment of their historical level and are vulnerable to threats. Illegal harvesting occurs to this day, with multiple females taken from nesting beaches each year. For nests and hatchlings, threats include artificial lighting on nesting beaches, causing hatchlings to misorient away from the sea, and inundation of nests by seawater-reducing hatch success. The impacts of lighting were found to increase over the monitoring period. Overall, a study shows that despite a massive reduction from early population levels, the Cayman Islands nesting population has indeed increased for both loggerhead and green sea turtles. However, continuing threats indicate that, quote, strategically targeted management efforts are needed to secure the future survival of these populations. For Radio Cayman News, I am Paul Akal. You can find the full study online at frontiersin.org. The country is seeing the first turtle nests of the 2021 season, and they've popped up in Kim and Brack. The Department of Environment says three nests have been reported so far, a record number in the Brack for April. The Brack turtle team confirms that all three nests are loggerhead turtle nests, identifiable by the tracks in the sand. These turtles and nests are monitored and protected to ensure the population continues to recover. If you see any sea turtle activity on Kim and Brack beaches, please report it to the Brack turtle team. Their number is 929-7377. A parliamentary breakfast this morning drew a massive crowd at the Ritz as the community heard from the governor, premier, leader of the opposition, and many others. What I see is a, a country with relative peace and stability, including a law and order climate that is the envy of the region. But we should not take that for granted. We should be thankful for the advances we have made. Nor must we take our democracy for granted. It is hard work, but hard work is necessary to protect our good governance and the rule of law. Devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. And pray for us too, that God may open a door for our message, so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ, for which I am in chains. Pray that I may proclaim it clearly as I should. Be wise in the way you act towards outsiders. 
make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. Thus says the Lord, in an acceptable time I have heard you, and in the day of salvation I have helped you. I will preserve you and give you as a covenant to the people to restore the earth, to cause them to inherit the desolate heritages, heritages that you may say to the prisoners, go forth to those who are in darkness, show yourself. The event featured prayer and presentations by local evangelists, community leaders, and politicians. That is your latest local news from Radio Cayman's newsroom. I'm April Cummings.